Welcome to another edition of California CEO. I'm Sean Reynolds, and I'll be your host today as we speak with Larry Strong, the co-owner and vice president of operations for Big Sky Electric, an industrial electrical contractor located in Upland, California. We are pleased to have Mr. Strom on the show, not only as a chief executive with over 30 years of experience, but also as the president of the Southern Sierras chapter of NECA, the National Electrical Contractors Association. Larry Strom, welcome to California CEO. Thank you. Big Sky Electric, now how big is Big Sky Electric? Uh, we do roughly $10 million a year in revenue. Um, I like to think we're the biggest little contractor in the electrical arena around. Uh, we're small, we're tenacious, uh, but we have the ability to do some pretty big stuff. 30 years of experience. Wow, you, I'm going to tell you, you don't look that old. Well, it's not the years that get you, it's the mileage. <laughs> now, I saw in your bio that you've even worked at uh, Cape Canaveral. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, my, my career has remarkable similarities to the company I helped build. Um, I started out as an apprentice through the NJATC, went to school two nights a week, two nights a week of homework, worked 40 hours a week, sometimes more, um, and, and found the, the importance of surrounding yourself by good people on the job site. And, and what I was learning at night, uh, to apply it at the job site and have, those, have that mentoring in place to get you to that next level. And once I achieved that next level, it was off to the races. I went to Cape Canaveral, built launch complexes, wow. went to Chicago, built power plants. Um, I've built water treatment plants, wastewater plants, filtration plants, cement plants, did air tra uh, airport runway lighting. So yeah, it, it was on and uh, it's, been a, it's been a ride. And you started with the NJTC, you started with the IBW. Absolutely, worked all the way through it. Uh, came up uh, th uh, 48,000 hours into the trade and then rolled over and, and uh, started the business. Wow, so you could really be a spokesman for that uh, training program. Oh, I, I believe in it. Now, um, Big Sky on their website, I'm, I'm reading, they list their core values as integrity, education, mentoring, perseverance, and vision. Do you take a moment and tell me some about some of those things well, or, or one of them too? I, I think, uh, you know, the core values, they, they apply just not to Big Sky, but they should apply uh, to the industry. Uh, if, you, if you talk about integrity, um, you know, it, it's our clear and, and it's our clear duty to be trusted. Uh, we should conduct ourselves honorably in all of our business dealings if no rules are needed at all. You go into uh, education and mentoring, it's the foundation of our growth. Uh, you know, mentoring is the security of our existence. If you don't have education, uh, you don't have building blocks to build a company on. If you don't have mentoring, you, you don't have the ability to grow and further the company. You're gonna stay stagnant and, or, or just go away. Um, you get into perseverance, it's a tenacious world out there. You need to, you need to push through some, push through the issues. Uh, you know, you need resolve, commitment, patience, determination. You know, those are, those are things that, that we possess, that we look for, skills that we look for. Um, and, and having a, a predictable company that finishes what we start, no matter what the obstacle is, uh, that, that's what we want to deliver. Um, vision, visionary, we get hired to plan. Uh, the, the only limitation to, to proper preparation, to proper uh, uh, planning is failure of imagination. Uh, our owners rely on our experience. We have to see things that others do not uh, in order to achieve their success, which ultimately is our success. Design and build, that's, you, you focus on that a lot. We do. Uh, we do a lot of design build work. Um, it's a, a, a dynamic teaming process. Uh, so much work nowadays, it's, it gets into contract law, it gets into posturing. And you, you end up, because of, of the, the type of contracts that you get in, you find yourself building a job and, and protecting yourself. 
Design build is a different concept where you surround yourself with some competent partners in the business, a, a team, and you bid collectively against other teams to build a project. And, and it's something that's worked for us real well and, and, and it becomes more focused on construction instead of playing defense. You told me an interesting story before we got started. And you said that you actually started Big, si Big Sky, you're the co-owner, in 2008 when things were collapsing. Now, how did that work out? Well, you know, it, it is, and, and, and it's not just me. I have some brilliant partners, John Phillips, Chris Livingston. These guys are great at Big Sky Electric. We all got together. We go back 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. Our wives know each other. We have dinners, and, and this was going on for, for many years. We've worked together on and off. Um, 2008 comes along, economy's crashing, everything's, people are going out of business, people are getting laid off. Um, but when you get a group of people that have the vision, that have, that has the competence, that, that has integrity, that has certain elements, you see things different than other people. You see things as opportunity. And for us, we looked at it as a time to attack. Why 2008? Everything's crashing. We looked at it as going, well, we can buy our tools on 20 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Everybody's right. going out of business. Mm -hmm. We can buy our equipment. We can buy, our lease was 30 cents on the dollar for what we're getting. So we come in with a measurable overhead and we looked at it as opportunity. We were attacking, we were gonna attack. Yeah, and time we, to regroup or, or group. <laughs> we started the business, we bought, we executed our plan um, along with our partners and we bought tools, we started looking at work and we realized real quick, real fast that we can come in at a margin that's well underneath everybody that has these inflated overheads and we would still make money and survive and that's exactly what we did. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, how it turned out. Now, you wear different hats. You're also the president of the Southern Sierras chapter of NECA, yes. the National Electrical Contractors Association. So how does that uh, relationship uh, go with your company? Well, there's, there's parallels in the goals of the IBEW, NECA, and Big Sky Electric. Uh, we have a common interest. We all look at the industry as a whole. And the electrical marketplace has a need for training, has a need for quality, safety, uh, and we all focus on the importance of supporting the community and, and circulating and doing business within the community and circulating the dollars that are earned within the community. So, so back to Big Sky now, what are some of the projects that you work on? What, what, is, what kind of work do you do? Well, currently we have a water treatment plant up at Fort Irwin, California. Uh, it takes wastewater, treats it into uh, a, a level where they can put it back into the ground and replenish groundwater to finish off the process. So it's, it replenishes the groundwater uh, from, from waste. Uh, we have projects going on at Camp Pendleton that is a water filtration plan. It, it's a water conveyance and it moves water around, uh, around the, the base. Um, we have work down at Hyperion Treatment Plant. It's a water facility there. Uh, it's Glendale, it's the, uh, in the LA region? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, um, we have, we just finished up a power plant up at, at uh, Fort Irwin also that mm -hmm. took trash, turning it to energy. Uh, we've done fuel cells for uh, Inland Empire Utility Agency. It's fuel cell taking uh, gas, methane gas off the digesters and turning it into energy. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's good times right now. Larry, now what gives you the advantage? What gives a NECA contractor, a signatory contractor, what gives them the advantage over a non-signatory contractor? Now, you know, the contractors out there, they're, they're educated, they, you know, they're professional, but what gives NECA that edge? I think the, the advantage is, it starts from estimating. We have a consistent labor force. Uh, that's on call 24-7. When we bid a job, we might not have that group of employees working for us at that time, but with the drop of a phone call, I can, get the, I can get the labor force there. They are trained, they're competent, they're proficient, uh, and it can happen. When we get the job, if the job grows, we expand, call for five guys, boom, they're there. And we do that you know, all the time. That, that is just how it's done. And when we don't need the labor force, we let them go. And, but 
They on the next job, the, on the next the job, yeah, they go back to the hall, and and we we can go again in three weeks if we need to, and, and get that same consistent labor force. And of course, we're talking about the IBW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, and then that goes back to that training that you had uh, so many years ago yes. with the NJATC. And, and tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's a good program. It's five years long. Uh, they go to school uh, during the nights. They have homework, they get tested, and ultimately reach in their state certification and get tested on certification. So when the projects call for men, we have people that are proficient, they know the codes, they know the work, they know how to use the tool in. From a safety aspect, our, our safety record goes down, we just work it safer. The men know how to take care of themselves. Safe, safety, that's a big uh, issue. And the quality is there, the, our rework is next to none. So when you go to call for labor, extra labor, you know on that force that you're going to get somebody that's qualified. Absolutely. I and mean, we, you, you actually experienced it. Absolutely. And we know it when we're bidding. When we're bidding the projects, we aren't worried about, well, I, I got to pass on this opportunity because I don't have labor in place. That, that is a non-factor with a union contractor being signatory with IBW. I don't worry about labor ever. I see an opportunity. I bid the work labor will be there. And, and another aspect of that, these people are local. They, when, you, when you're hiring from that uh, local hall, these people live in the community. Absolutely. A beautiful thing. Uh, support in the community is, is very important to NECA, to the IBW, and to Big Sky Electric. Uh, tax, people pay taxes. Mm -hmm. They go into infrastructure. We're an infrastructure contractor. We do a lot of public, uh, public works projects. Uh, nobody likes to pay the taxes, but they like it when they take their showers that the water comes out of the nozzles and the lights go on when they flip the switch. Uh, but when that projects come to fruition, you want to hire locally. The money comes from, from the general fund, it goes to the contractor, and ultimately goes to the workers. And it is always good when the workers are hired locally because they're taking the money that they've earned and they're spending it at the sandwich shop, at the car dealers, and, mm -hmm. and on their children in, in the local community. And that money gets recirculated around. It's a great thing. And now, one thing I was thinking with the training, uh, we're constantly on a learning curve now in, in technology. Right. You were mentioning something about SCADA. Can you explain that to me a little yeah. bit? SCADA, the SCADA industry, uh, we've seen a pretty good surge in, in uh, the marketplace of SCADA. It stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Uh, and it's really monitoring a lot of the existing facilities, water treatment plants, water filtration, it'd be power. You know, again, what gets measured gets attention. Uh, and, and within the water districts, they're applying that same. They measure how much water's flowing. Uh, we collect that data, we measure it through, through instruments. We collect it, send it into data concentrators, basically radio signals, send it back into the mothership, and they can run 30 different well sites, 40 different well sites from one central location. They can monitor it. It's great technology, power saving. Uh, all the way around, it'll save the taxpayers Is a lot of money. Big Sky employing that uh, in projects right now? Absolutely. We have work down in Oceanside that's a large uh, SCADA project. We're working with Inland Utilities uh, Agency uh, on a SCADA project there up at Fort Irwin. We just finished up uh, some SCADA work there, Camp Pendleton. It's been a big, big surge, big surge in the SCADA industry. Now, is there, some, is there anything else on technology that, uh, that you'd like to mention? Well, I think the solar arena is, is going crazy, and, and uh, the rooftop solar is, is always, but I think we're in our infancy in, in those areas. Uh, I, I think it's just going to become more and more common. Um, but I think we're going to see the big push is going to be in energy storage. Uh, up until now, the solar in industry has to have sun in order to make energy. Well, now we're getting into the battery world uh, where uh, energy is being kept and they're storing it in a battery so you still have power at night. The and then they recharge. Game. It's a whole new game changer. Now, Larry, one thing I've heard, I've read in, in the, uh, the media, is a shortage of craft workers. It kind of goes back to that 2008 downturn uh, these reports are, right. are tying it to where 
people fell out of the labor force. There wasn't a lot of building going on for a long time. So there wasn't a, a lot of push towards craft workers. And, and this is the, now the, in certain areas of the country, there's a shortage. So NECA bringing in this training, and now this isn't just for men, of course. This is a, a, a field that's expanding more and more to women, men and women, is that correct? Absolutely, right now, you have to be proactive, and that's one of the things. NECA, IBW, try to be proactive, try to, because the, the strength is having that labor on call. Um, so the recruiting goes on, there's programs constantly going to recruit college, to recruit. Uh, there's a lot of women coming into the plan. Uh, there's a helmets to hard hat program to get veterans coming in and put them right into going from helmets to a hard hat and getting them into the industry. Uh, to get them, you know, a career path, uh, something that gives them a pension, gives them health, that, that provides that provides for their family so they can settle down in the local community here so and, and grow. So, so we're constantly recruiting, trying to stay in front of that, that need uh, to, to give the advantage to the contractor that's signatory. Now, Larry, where do you see things going in the future? Where, for Big Sky and, and larger for the uh, electrical industrial community? Yeah, the, the electrical marketplace, it's, it's in a dynamic times right now. The instrumentation, the automation is, again, I think things are in their infancy. I think computers, why they're such a huge part of our life, they're just touching on the things that they can do. We're constantly collecting data, we're constantly analyzing and finding new ways to generate power, clean, sustainable, groundwater intrusion, we talk about the merging of, of the, the green movement, of, of the green marketplace coming in, sustainability, energy efficiency, uh, meeting up with technology. Uh, and these are, these are different sectors that are just gonna merge and it all takes electrical, it all takes programming. Uh, it's just, a, it's gonna be exciting times in the next 10, 15 years. Well, Larry, thanks for stopping by today. I know you're a busy man. Uh, we appreciate you coming to the show. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. The National Electrical Contractors Association and the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers have a proven track record of providing top quality results for all the projects they engineer and build. Through training, innovation, and experience, they play a valuable role in the communities they serve. We want to thank Larry Strom for talking with us today and wish Big Sky Electric a safe and prosperous future. I'm Sean Reynolds. Thank you for watching California CEO.